It's your open source advocate and I'm back. I wanted to cover a little bit of a follow up on my Rust desk video from last week. I, I kind of breezed over a couple of things that I feel like people didn't really catch and, and I wanted to point you to the docs because their docs are very clear but as I've gotten more and more questions on it I, I want to make sure everybody understands that if you run Rust desk in the way that I showed in the video without using the key field in the client, this field here, you're essentially creating an unencrypted connection to your to your peer machine through the relay server. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So, if you want it to be encrypted, you need to fill this key field, but it can't just be anything you want. You actually have to use a, a value that gets created when you create your self-hosted server. So they tell you what it looks like here um, when you do it in Windows. So what they're saying is for this value that you want to find, you basically want to change the name of your Windows executable to look more like this. So I'm going to zoom this up a little bit so it's easier for you to read. But basically it says you're going to name it Rust Desk and then put a hyphen and you're going to put host equals and then either the host IP or the subdomain or domain that you created. So whatever you call it. So in my case, we called it rust.routemehome.org. So we would put rust.routemehome.org right there. And then we would put comma, and this is all no spaces, uh, key equals, and then we would paste in the key that we'll get out of this file. And then .exe. So you basically want to change that name of that Windows executable and basically put in your credentials for your site and then if anybody downloads your copy of that file so put that file where your clients can get it where your friends family can get it and basically they don't have to go change anything in here it'll just auto already be set so if you set this up correctly of course test it yourself make sure it works you should not have to go into the ID settings and change anything or tell your friends how to do it or tell your clients how to do it so if you're looking at using this for remote support things like that you can do that for the Windows executable now, it does not work for Linux. I wish they would make it work for Linux, but there may be some other issues that it can't work for Linux that way. But um, hopefully you could walk somebody through putting in the correct values here if, if you need to. Now, when we talk about that key value, if you come down to the key section, it says right here that there is a key that's that gets created. Now, yours won't be named exactly like this, but it'll say ID underscore some random number. And then you'll have one that says ID underscore some random number, some random number dot pub. So once you find this inside of that directory, and I'll show you where it is here in just a second, you need to copy the key out of this ID underscore some random number dot pub. You want to copy the entire key and you want to paste that into that field for all of your clients. And once you've done that, your clients will be talking encrypted. Now it needs to be set on both clients so that they can talk back and forth with encryption. Now the other question that I got, and I'll cover that real quick, is well, what if I don't want other people to be able to use my server as a relay server. So inside of your Docker Compose file you can make a change here um, just looking at their documentation. You just need to add this hyphen K space underscore to the end of the commands in each of those sections. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like. Um, I'll bring up Tabby here. We'll do nano Docker Compose. Now this is just a test server so it's just got an IP address in it. Um, but right here where you've got this command line for the HBBS server you would just go out here and you would just type dash K and then underscore like this with a space in between. And the same thing down in the next section for the HBBR server where it says command right here where it says HBBR you would type space dash K and then space underscore. You save your file, you exit, and then you'll run your Docker Compose up to get everything running so that that dash K says the key is a required field on the client or else it can't run through my relay server. So I've had a few of those questions come up. I wanted to make sure that I'm covering these things because I think encryption is important. 
the way I ran the video, I, I kind of intended for you to use it on your own LAN, on your own machines, things like that. But I did talk about using it for clients and using it for others. And then I kind of breezed over the security section and I shouldn't have done it that way. And I apologize for that because I know I left a lot of people with questions and going, hey, I just figured out this isn't encrypted. Um, I, I did mention it, but I, I should have covered it in more depth like I am now. So um, I want to cover it now and make sure you guys have this information. Um, so yeah, if we, if we go and we actually run the Docker compose command, I'm going to clear this out. So if we run Docker hyphen compose dot, uh, space up dash D, we'll let that pull down our rest desk server information. It's going to start those up. So now this should create some folders inside of this location, which it did. So you've got this HBBR and this HBBS folder. Now I believe these are inside of the HBBS folder. We can do LS HBBS. Oops, if I type it right. Yeah, so I've got this ID pub. So what I want to do is I want to do cat HBBS slash ID E and then dot pub. So when I do this, I've got this key inside of there. Now, it really ends right here. I don't know why it kind of sticks the, uh, the, the rest of my stuff, but it ends with the equal sign. So the equal sign is the end of the key. So you basically copy this entire key right here. And it's kind of hard to do because it wants to be a link. There we go. Cause it wants to be an email address for some reason. Um, but you copy this and if you need to, you can just go into the file. So you can also just say, let's just clear this. We'll do nano HBBS, uh, ID E dot pub. And now we can see the key and we can just copy this key out of here. And what, what you want to do is take that key that you have and you want to put it in something like Bitwarden. You want to make sure that you've got it in Bitwarden. You copy it and paste it in a Bitwarden and call it Rust Desk Key. That way you've got it in an encrypted place. You've got it saved and then you can take your Bitwarden with you on your phone or anywhere else. You can open it up on another person's computer and then log out of it and it's nice and secure. But you've got a way to access that key and put it into those uh, files. So if you're using a Linux machine, you've got to put it into those uh, into those identity uh, setup forms that they have on the actual client itself. And if you're using Windows, like I said, you can just do this function here where you basically set it up inside of the name of the file so that whenever somebody downloads it, they've got it, they install it on Windows and it's ready to go. So you've got a couple of ways to get that encryption key set up and running on your server. Um, I have tried this. I, I use it this way. Um, I, again, I, I kind of breezed over it last week. I just said you should go check out the docs for this, and I should have really just covered it in more depth. I apologize for not doing that the first time. But um, you, only, you only have to fill in the ID server and the key as long as all your servers are running on the same domain or the same subdomain or the same IP address. Um, if you're running the ID server on one machine and the relay server on another machine and the API server on another machine, if any of these are different, you need to put it in all three fields and the key or it won't work. Um, again, if you if you don't put in the ID server and the key on both machines, it's not going to work correctly. It's not going to encrypt. So be careful with that. Definitely come check out their documentation. They have really good docs. It tells you exactly how to do these things. So it tells you how to set the HBBS HBR address on the client side. And really just through the step three of the section, it shows you exactly what to do and exactly where to put things and then how to change the file name of the Windows file. And then down here, it tells you about the key and you can see this in the Windows file to see that it was set correctly if you made that file. So if you make it, you install it, you open it up and you go to the about, it should show you um, the key and the host IP address or the host name, depending on what you're running. And then, of course, down here is where you get the key. So they tell you about that. So I just showed you how to do that in the command line. I hope that helps clear things up a little bit about the security that's built into Rust Desk. I know there was a lot of questions and people saying, hey, this is too hard. If I have to tell somebody how to go and put these things into that field, it just takes too much time. I'd rather use something like TeamViewer or some other, you know, some other tool like remotely where I can set it up myself. You can also do it here for Windows. Uh, for Linux, you cannot include those those uh, paths yet. Um I hope as they continue to move forward with this product, it will get to the point where we can also do that for Linux and Mac and any other machine that we want to support. But today with Windows, you basically set it into the file name, have them run that that extent, that exe to install it, and then it'll have everything inside of there that, that they need. So I wanted to cover that. Uh, I hope that's helpful for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.